This is TVC News at 1. We begin um, this hour here in Lagos State, where many commuters were stranded at various bus stops as few queues resurface in some parts of Lagos. Queues comprising private and commercial vehicles um, at dot filling stations in many parts of the state spilling into main roads. The queues appeared on Monday, but worsened as later as vehicle owners scramble for premium motor spirit, also known as petrol. Meanwhile, commuters were stranded at numerous bus stops in the four local government areas as commercial vehicles, popularly known as downfalls and tricycles, locally known as Kekena Pep, hiked transport fares by about 50 percent. In the meantime, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority Sorry. has appealed to Nigerians not to engage in panic buying of petrol, saying it has enough in stock. The Chief Executive Officer, NMDPRA, Farouk Ahmed, said he had checked with the Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria and Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited on the level of fuel stock and confirmed that they had sufficient stock. And joining us now is social reformer Andy Akotive to discuss this developing story and its implication. Good to have you join us. Great to be here. Good afternoon to you. So on the one hand, um, the government is saying do not panic buy, or the NNPC is saying do not panic buy. Uh, we have enough in stock. But on the other hand, um, when, you, when you check for stations this morning for those who live in Lagos, most of them were not selling. There were long queues waiting for them to begin sales. I mean, how do you reconcile both, both situations, one statement and then the other, which is the reality on ground? So I'm wondering, we, we have never been able to thoroughly reconcile statements that come from government in recent times. The statements sometimes appear to be um, really very funny, for want of better words. Um, so do not panic buy, and it stops there. What's happening to your driving the process to make people get it easily, or you're preventing this situation in the first instance? Government is there to make situations easy, situations that ordinarily would be, would be made difficult for citizens by those capitalists. Government is there to make it easy for Nigerians. One of the things that is not understood by our government is that transportation is like fear that drives every economy in every country to the level that is expected. And where you do not have fear to drive transportation, the implication is that your economy will keep going down. In times like this, when we are presenting a budget, out of which 11 million is to be used for subsidy, another 6 million is to be used to pay debt, leaving us with less than even 4, 5, uh, sorry, trillion rather, leaving us with less than 4, 5 trillion. In times like this, when we are spending as much as 11 trillion to subsidize petroleum products, our government, again, they are coming to tell us that we should not panic buy. If anything was worse than preposterous, this statement indeed encapsulates it. Mm. And, and, you know, you, when you were speaking earlier, you talked about the capitalists, and, and some of the marketers have said that, look, um, they, there is an unsteady supply of the product, even though the NMDPRA is saying um, we have enough in stock. And one, one knows that, yes, sometimes the marketers can hoard this product just to drive up the, the, the price. But... One of the reasons for the PIA, which is Petroleum Industrial Act, is um, transparency in that industry. Do you think that that has been achieved? Um, that, again, we have transparency in the petroleum industry. What, what is transparency from the downstream to the upstream? There's no transparency. So, so if, we, if we are going to have this conversation, I'm sure it's going to take more than two hours. So that I speak with you from the Niger Delta. We, are, we have seen recent findings of how collaborators, not only of individual players, but state actors are involved in siphoning our fuel, are involved in siphoning our pet petroleum products. So where, 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 what is the assurance that they're giving? How, 
how can you be assured now that you have got sufficiencies, sufficiency of petroleum products? How can you be assured? Because, for instance, does, does it make sense to even the government officials that today we have been given a call So we have been unable to meet with the production of this quota. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Production. Even though we have been unable to meet up with it, they are still siphoning fuel. Individuals are siphoning fuel. Government has not come up to tell us that, oh, the people who we found to be siphoning fuel, they are X, Y, Z. The people who we positioned to watch over or to secure these places that we have found that people are siphoning fuel or diesel from. We have done X, Y, Z to them. And they are coming to assure us. You see, assuring or assurance in this government has been something that we hear every now and again. I assure you people, we will assure you people, we will assure you people, the more they assure us, the more things keep getting worse. So that's I speak with you. I want to emphasize again that it is consequences, consequences mm. that will make people that will adjust behavior in society. Consequences. If people do not get consequences for actions that they took in society, society would be this disjointed. Society would be this disorganized. Society and, and, would and be we'll this. And we see how. Um, I mean, this fuel scarcity started from from the FCT. That that was explained as the as um, the flood in Kogi was the reason for that, and that's the explanation. But we'll see where um, how this plays out between now and tomorrow, whether the situation will ease up. Thank you so much for talking to us, social reformer, Andy Akotive. Thank you so much for having me.